It's equity news and equity access, your cross section of the stock markets and of developments in the Zimbabwean economy. A beautiful evening it is to you. Thank you for joining us as we broadcast live from Hampton Studios in Harare. I'm Ibn Mabunda. Let's get on to business. Our news tonight. Bus and truck manufacturer AVM Africa held a media tour at their facilities in Masasafat this morning under the theme 10 around effort. Well, following the tour, um, AVM announced that they will be partnering, partnering with CityCard, a Chinese transport and traffic solutions company. Well, the partnership is an initiative to revive AVM's production base of buses. At its historic peak, AVM produced an average of 40 buses per month with a workforce of over 2,500 while feeding 85 downstream companies. This has since ceased to be, of course, due to an economic meltdown that has affected the country um, for a couple of decades. While AVM is currently employing about 80 employees, but soon it could employ about 2,000 employees and the company will soon be producing 600 buses per annum as opposed to the current 360 per annum production level. I had to close up with the AVM AVM MD Mr. Jacob Cooper as well as City Card Chief Executive Mr. Ngoni Matsenga. Let's have a look. This, this partnership, obviously, City Card is going to bring the driveline component, and AVM will provide the assembly arrangement initially. But what we, are, what we want to build on is we start off with CKD kit or SKD kits, bringing kits, but we want to develop. In the end, we're going to end up making these buses locally. The fact that um, the MD has already stated that currently they are between 5 and 10 percent. Right. And uh, like my partner rightly says, once the shipments are in and production starts, we are obviously looking at beyond 100 percent. Because uh, this, okay, AVM Africa is large by local standards, but actually more can be done to sort of even expand it. So in terms of capacity utilization, certainly 100%. You, you use the word expand. What stakes are we talking about here well, in terms of the figures? Um, I, did, I didn't pick any figures from the presentation. Well, if I, if I, if I, if I heard uh, correctly, current capacity stands at about uh, 50 buses per month maximum, and that would translate probably to about 600 buses per annum. But uh, once we come on board, I think we'll be able to do maybe even double that amount because we can actually create you know double production lines that is why i was saying certainly 100 percent and even beyond in other business news zse heavy cap old mutual has taken bold step towards a leaner and more effective cost structure in response to the local business environment, as well as guided by the parents group strategy, Old Mutual Africa, Old Mutual Zimbabwe is implementing a retrenchment exercise which is meant to reduce its wage bill by 10%. Let's just have a quick look at their wage bill for 2018. A breakdown would reveal that they're spending $47 million, 71% um, being wages, 8% other, 10% bonuses and pensions, 8%. So this perhaps is a strategy to actually reduce reduce this wage bill by um, as I said 10 percent so this would take off as a, um, this would take off about 4.7 million dollars from this particular figure for the year 2019 last Friday during the presentation of the company's 2018 financials group chief executive mr. Jonas Mushosho indicated a lean strategy for the company going forward let's take a listen Business reorganization to enhance efficiencies. Following the managed separation that saw Old Mutual's headquarters return to Africa, the next step was for all countries where we have operations to review their organizational structures. In this regard, Old Mutual Zimbabwe is working on a restructuring exercise with a view to come up with an optimal structure that is less complicated and ultimately achieves operational efficiencies. We also believe that our dynamic operating environment requires greater board and management responsiveness coupled with faster decision making. This will be, this we believe will better facilitate 
or be facilitated by a simpler group structure that we are working on. Well, for conversation on these and other issues, I'm joined in studio by our very own investment analyst, Anessa Chumbumo. Anessa, good evening and welcome to the show. Thank you, Ivan. How are you doing? Can't what complain, should only get better yourself. Uh, it's pretty much good. Pretty Fantastic. Much good. Let's cut to the chase. Just by talking about uh, old mutual stance to re um, reduce its um, uh, workforce, um, we are informed by a highly placed source that we are lo lo looking at a situation where employees have been offered retrenchment packages right up until the 12th of April. Um, what is the relevance of that in terms of the operations of the group going forward? Well, well, just to, just to give a little bit more clarity as to the, the timeline that you've mentioned up until the 12th of April, the, the, the timeline that has that date is much to do with voluntary packages that are being offered by, 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 uh, by, by Old Mutual, where you'll find that uh, they, have, they have a certain number in terms of uh, the, the, the benefits that they will be getting as an exit package for, for the employees that do volunteer for an exit uh, and then after the 12th, then it, w then it they would shift into the next gear, which would be an involuntary uh, retrenchment package, which I would assume would pretty much be revised downwards from what they are currently offering in terms of the voluntary package that they're going to be offering. Okay. Well, some, some parts of the voluntary package is 12 months salary, uh, and then you've got uh, your three months, ex your three months uh, notice, salary that does come in, you also have um, a, 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 percentage, a, a percentage of that salary being multiplied by the number of years that you've worked for the organization, ETC, okay. ETC, the final details would be pretty much privy to them. But uh, those are some of the details that, that have been, that I, I managed to, to, to get from some of my sources. Now, the, the relevance pretty much talks to, to how the business environment is moving, is currently, because the the group is, is pretty much likely to face a, a reduction in their revenues because of the suppressed demand that is going to be coming in on uh, because of inflation issues and also foreign currency issues that have been uh, pretty much uh, tying up a lot of people in, ter in terms of them getting into their, in, getting uh, some business in terms of the group getting more business or rather suffering a lot a lot more claims because of how the foreign currency system has has been based now just to give a little bit more clarity they the, the, the group didn't mention that their claims actually do, did go up because of a lot of uh, short term short term insurances uh, that had to be claimed on because of repairs which need which a lot of uh, clients started demanding on because they didn't have enough foreign currency for them to actually inject on them by themselves for them to to actually uh, service their vehicles so they would rather take it out on the insurance where some of their packages some of their insurance packages actually have uh, ha have have that component within their within their within their product so it that actually pushed up their claims and the, the short term short term loan business actually uh, sorry short term insurance business actually suffered about a, a, a three percent loss there so in them actually starting to reduce on their revenue on their cost base most companies are likely going to go through some retrenchment uh, retrenchment uh, programs yeah, because mean, because I mean, I mean it, it, it's, it's <laughs> a high cost yes yeah. and ten percent being being cut off it's almost pretty much the same as bonuses and if if they don't give bonuses at the end of the year employees won't be <laughs> won't be pretty much motivated i mean we can start talking about uh, motivational ways to to improve uh, uh in, improve worker worker output and, and the and the like i mean mcgregor's x and y theory there about uh i mean you, you can also look at the fact that uh the business itself it, with with the threat of reduced revenues, they should go through this kind of uh, initiative. Also, with uh, with with Mr. Shosha, they mentioning that they're looking to be a little bit more efficient and and very lean. Talking about efficiency, could this be perhaps 
um, drive toward digitization. I mean, we've seen something similar. So yes, recently they, they actually in, did in, mention that they've, they've, they've had some digi di digitization programs that they've been running, uh, I think, as, as far back more intensely as far back as uh, late 2017 uh, 2018 had a lot of digitization programs they did run uh, they have some of their some of their own branches that have some automated uh, machines that customers do interact with so pre so so they so basically there are a whole lot of issues that are actually coming that, into play here yes there, there is the cost aspect of the, things there is mm -hmm. also perhaps the, the 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 effectiveness in terms of the operations mm -hmm. from a digitization mm -hmm. perspective yes. which is also coming in just to you know shed light as to what exactly that we have actually playing out here yeah it's it's, it's a pretty tough choice for them because i mean cost of living have been going up in in, in zimbabwe uh, and uh, I, would, I, would, I, would, I would hate to see that they're going to take the wage cut uh, bill in, in, in another form or manner, which would be reducing the uh, wages of, of, of the current employees that are there. But then that would be very much detrimental and very unrest worthy for most, for most employees because already at the current wage bills uh, that some of these employees are getting, uh, they're not very much satisfied okay, as to but, how they can, they can I'm, I'm a bit concerned level. though, Anis. Mm -hmm. These are the market leaders. These guys are heavily cap capitalized. Mm -hmm. Now, if this is the move taken by Old Mutual, what about the other players in the market? It's pretty much to follow suit. I mean, a lot of accountants, when they look at how to make <laughs> a business uh, a little bit more profitable, a little bit more efficient in terms of profitability, then the, normally I've come across a lot of accountants saying that wage bill has to be cut is the first thing that is always attacked. I realize. Now let's talk about um, AVM. They mm -hmm. have made um, the bold move there to bring in a strategic partner who's said to be CityCard. Mm -hmm. um, uh, CityCard, um, um, uh, well, they're coming in on board and there is potential with that particular setup, they um, indicating that they are hoping to increase their capacity mm -hmm. from the five percent where they're currently running to over a hundred percent in a short space of time. You know what? What are your sentiments where that is concerned? I know you were a part of the um, delegation that was touring the facilities. Can you t tell us just a little bit about the facilities that you did tour um, this morning? Well, what one thing that, that I did uh, pretty much notice was that. Uh, the company has been heavily undercapitalized in terms of uh, machinery, uh, even the machine that they're using is pretty much out of date, very labor intensive, uh, which could, which pretty much puts them at a place where they can only produce about 40 buses a year when they are, pro when they are operating at a hundred percent capacity utilization. So that's one factor. So now with City Card coming in, there was mentioned that there, there's going to be expansion in terms of uh, the capitalization in, 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 with regards to the machinery that is being that is used. Um, now, how well they didn't mention a lot of, of about the numbers that they're going to be investing. Well, this is basically because a City Card is a is a Zimbabwean-owned company apparently uh, that has a partnership with about three other. Chinese uh, partners that are based in, in, in China, where okay. amongst those partners, they, are, they have a partnership with one, uh, with one of the biggest bus company, bus manufacturing companies in, in, in China, okay. which, which the CE of City Card purported to, yes, to have been the fifth biggest bus manufacturing company in, 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 in China. This bus manufacturing company in China pretty much uh, produces about fifty thousand buses, if I'm not mistaken, a year. Uh, I, I may have okay. got that thing a little okay, bit. Okay, no, no. But uh, if 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 that's su if such a kind of a partner that they have, it has been producing that much of buses a year, then there is uh, there is a chance and a scope for AVM to reach those numbers. But then for the initial stages. They are talking about um, the providence of uh, baskets. Now, baskets would be pretty much what then drives the bus outside the shell and the wheels and 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 all of the the, the interior stuff. But then the basket would be uh, your engine, your your drive shafts uh, and the like. So, AVM had been making uh, had had been had been making pretty much sixty five percent 
of their products from uh, from local 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 um, produce, which is your the shell, and then the thirty five percent of their cost on the bus was an import uh, aspect. Now, because of foreign currency issues, that pretty much showed a lot of uh, challenges for the company. Now, with CityCard coming in and being that 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 uh, partner that they have, which will be bringing in the baskets that I mentioned earlier on, would then alleviate that problem from AVM, and um, it should it should start up uh, bring the company back to about a, a good number of uh, capitalization going forward, uh, slowly growing. Um, I wouldn't expect a very quick uh, turnaround there. Uh, there may be a little bit of logistical issues that they may still need to be ironing out in the beginning stages. Uh, okay. But then, pretty much, if 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 they run it on a very on a very um, on a very solid and and efficient base, I think in a year we could be talking about the fifty buses that they're going to be uh, they're going to be producing a month. Uh, they are proposing to move from forty buses to fifty because they're going to be bringing in about fifty baskets uh, a month. Um, by the way, one bus for AVM at the at that time. Uh, it would take them six weeks to to produce one, and that would translate to ten buses a week, okay. which is pretty much the forty that they did in a month. And so now they are trying to push those numbers up to fifty a month, and then have about five hundred uh, there about a year. Okay. So it 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 could be something that uh, that could be uh, profitable for okay. them. Um, Anesu, um, we are in the twenty first century. When people hear of AVM, mm-hmm. this is what they get yes. in, 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 um, in, their, heads, in yeah. their heads playing. Mm-hmm. So is, is this what we are talking about? I mean, say we are going to increase production of these kind of buses? No, they, they did uh, show us uh, that they have different other products other than this one. They have the, the mini buses. You'll find some, most of those being used by a lot of corporates currently in Zimbabwe. And then they also... Yeah, I've seen I've seen a couple of those buses among other corporates. Um, then uh, we, they have they have a little bit more modern uh, oh, buses. The yes, they have a modern uh, type bus that they call the Dreamliner, okay. uh, which which is going to be produced. Uh, I think that will be mostly on an assembly uh, basis because AVM Africa had only been been manufacturing okay. from from scratch okay. but then now they're going to be moving into assembly as well so, so that they can move up their their output uh, uh, numbers so it, it, once they get into into assembly after a couple of uh, new machinery then comes in which from one of the one of the managerial guys at AVM mentioned to be expected by the end of 2019 it should but before the end of 2019, those machine, that kind of machinery should be within their factories and they should be moving towards an assembly-based um, business as well, another, an, another aspect of the business. That okay, let's talk about the, the, the employment effect that this could have. I mean, when these guys were at their peak, they were employing 2,500, yes. and now there are talks of them perhaps moving about from the 80 in, in the figures that they have now yeah, and yeah, perhaps yeah. moving up towards about 2,000. Um, do you think that would be feasible? Um, uh, are, we, are we to expect that? Well, it, 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 it should be expected because, I mean, they were working at that time when they were employed 2,500, they were working on a double shift, which meant pretty much that the factory was running for 24 hours. Uh, so that then translates to them actually needing a lot more manpower. But then with, with, uh, with the initiative that they're trying to move into where you uh, find that new machinery is going to come in the number 2000 may be a little may maybe may be a little bit too optimistic uh, it, it may come down because of mechanization but uh, it, it's going to be a good number uh, we also talk about uh, downstream employment where AVM would be requiring more uh, products from other companies they did mention that uh, when they were at their peak they got most of their glass uh, glasses for for their windows uh, from PG Industries, and when when AVM then pretty much uh, collapsed, that 
costed uh, that costed PGA PG Industries because it seemed to have been their biggest client at that time. Okay. So if 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 they if they are talking about uh, two thousand, it could be it could be very much uh, achievable, including uh, downstream employees. Uh, you talk about Dun Dunlop, which was in in in, in Tari, they they, that's that could be another business that could have some resuscitation they coming in so yeah employment employ, employment opportunities will be will be pretty much attained uh, taking off a, a lot of uh, pressure from from the from the unemployment that is in Zimbabwe currently they could also be looking at actually uh, starting to replace or a significant portion in terms of the foreign currency that we actually use in terms of importing a lot of buses that is if they're going to be producing as many as possible in terms of their luxurious buses because most of the buses that are coming within the country are pretty much luxurious buses and if they do manage to replace that uh, that factor we could talk about uh, 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 it may be a negligible figure uh, but a, a good percentage I would suppose uh, being taken off of the foreign currency requirements that the country is currently looking at. I realize. Well, thank you, Anis, for the insights. We're just going to take a break. When we come back, we'll have a look at uh, the performance of the stock market. Please stay tuned. Welcome back, viewers. Um, it's now time for Daily Dose, and to, still with me is Anis Jumbumu, who is a resident investment analyst. Anis, please take us through the stock market. Well, it was a very damp day today for the stock market. Uh, it has come off about 2.17% on the All Share Index. Uh, the Industrial Index did drop 2.2%, while the Top 10 Index, which has been pretty much the, uh, the driver of, that, of the stock market uh, for the past couple of weeks, did come off 3.16 percent for it to settle at 114.26 points. Now, Nat Foods was the worst performing counter on the top 10 uh, index. Uh, Nat Foods is pretty much the, the ninth largest uh, counter in terms of market capitalization, which is around about 480 to 500 million dollars uh, on the stock market. Uh, it did come off 20 percent for its year to date to land just uh, at, at about 21 negative 21.18 percent it, it it used to hang in around about 0.5 percent in, in the positive on the year to date but uh, uh, since this it was pretty much affected on that year to date uh, performance day uh, just to move on into into our trend uh, our, our our five day trends have went uh, to about 0.77 percent in terms of all share index uh, in the positive uh, pretty much because of the, the huge drop that happened today of 2.17 percent while the top 10 index is still uh, a little bit further ahead but uh, winding down to about 0.88 percent while the industrial index is down 0.78 percent the mining index uh, seems is now very stable as it is now uh, five uh, sessions trading uh, with it being uh, s stable. Now, moving on to our rises and fallers, like I mentioned, Nat Foods did, uh, was the worst performing counter uh, of seven bears, uh, and then Will Dale on the other end of the stick was the best performing counter of uh, nine uh, bulls coming up 10%, while CBZ trailed that coming, da uh, coming up 9.87 percent while pro plastics added about 4.71 uh, percent for uh, pro plastics is scheduled for a analyst mm -hmm. briefing uh, tomorrow um, I I think we, we should be expecting a, a good number in terms of in terms of their revenues and and uh, and, and I mean I mean because we're looking at a packaging uh, industry they, they have a lot of plastics that use that are used in packaging we can talk about uh, 
their revenues coming up most mostly because of inflation, inflationary pressures. We can talk uh, and expect such kind of numbers coming up. Sindesa did add about three point two one percent. OK, added one point nine four percent. Now, Nat Foods had been stable for about the last 16 trading sessions uh, at about 700 cents. Now it's come down to 560 cents. Um, that's a huge uh, slump there. Cassava let up 8.9% after having enjoyed about two sessions in the positive uh, for it to settle at 120, 100.27 cents. While LMB did add, landed 20 cents today after letting go of. 1.8, uh, sorry, 8.8 percent. Eight, 8. African Sun and Old Nisho uh, did pretty much cap, uh, cap the top five uh, laggards of the session today. Uh, if we just move on again to our foreign currency market, um, the interbank rate still keeps uh, weakening. It's as now at 3.04. Uh, it, it, this is now pretty much 20 percent uh, worse off from the time it was prolongated on the 20th of uh, February uh, it, it, from, from, a, from a level of about 2.5 times. Uh, the old mutual implied rate did come off pretty much because of how there was a decline of about 1% in the local, in, in the, in the local uh, stock. But we, um, as opposed to what um, RBZ has, has stated as what as as what to expect that there would be somewhat a bit of a con convergence. It seems as though that uh, the parallel market actually is running away from 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 what we actually seeing. Well, yeah, but of, of, but of, of, it's it's a, it's, a, it's on a more steady it's on a more steady uh, level. Um, I, I suppose there is a time that the parallel market is going to have to hit a, a ceiling because it may not be very much sustainable for them to still trade at very high uh, prices. Uh, I mean, it's it's not it's not like it's not like our 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 salaries are being adjusted by a lot of companies. There's there there hasn't been much growth in terms of how much you can spend for me to buy U.S. dollars. Yes, the demand for U.S. dollars is still going to be there. They are pretty much, They seem to be a, a more formidable market to supply that is supply the Zimbabweans with the hard currency in terms of U.S. dollars. Uh, as opposed to the banking system that has been pretty much transferring from your RTGS account to your to your um, FCA account. So for me to get hard cash, I would pretty much go to, to the parallel market. Not to say that I do, but uh, <laughs> but that that option for them to keep on pushing their price up may come to a place where they need to be very much flat, and then we'll have to see how the interbank rate then fares in in terms of catching up with that well thank you once again Anisu, for the insights thank you viewers for watching don't forget to like subscribe follow us on twitter facebook and to visit our website www.equityaccess.net from Anisu and me Ranki, and good evening